helped, like identifying the certain decisions and actions that take me out of like the game and and put me into the you know ego mindset of caring about things that don't matter like that's so that's why like i think also a thing that helped is i like completely muted and put away all the melee related discords that um i'm in like i didn't leave them but i, I just stashed them away so they're like kind of out of sight out of mind mm -hmm. and just i think that helps i think like removing myself socially from the context of melee helps me to just stay more focused on the game and enjoy it for what it is which is just this fun game that's fun to play and i think it doesn't have to be more than that it. yeah it really doesn't and and i think that's part of why i was having these ego problems go out of control where i would get like frustrated and mad is because a lot of it was centered around like caring about what other people think or like what other people do and it's just like I don't know if I put myself in this like my own little bubble of like enjoyment then and not caring about what others think then it's a lot more fun that way like I've been doing that with the Final Fantasy games that I've been playing the past several weeks and I've been in that that's been some of the most fun I've been playing with those games too so it's like why not apply that to melee and I think it worked pretty darn well honestly that's a really good idea I've been having I've I noticed myself getting like like kind of irritated by certain things in my own community and I think that like that's honestly a really good call to just like take yourself out of it and move it elsewhere and just not worry about it I I think you're very wise for figuring out that that's like kind of what you need to do mm -hmm. do you me give me one sec I think I heard someone knock at my door yeah yeah, yeah. no worries I heard it too <clears throat> Oh, it's my graphics card. That's what it is. <laughs> nice. All right. Anyway, um, so let's see. Um, yeah, like, I definitely feel um, that's, like, been helping. And, and, like, so ever since then, so, like, since Monday morning, every every day I've just made it a habit where, like, after it like i do my usual morning routine where like one of the last things i do is i light one of my incense sticks but instead of just letting it sit there i actually bring it with me i sit down on my couch where my sunroom is and mm -hmm. i just sit there and i just basically stare at the thing until it burns out which takes like 50 or so minutes um and it's like a way to just have my thoughts it's like a meditative practice if anything it's like a way to have my thoughts just go wherever they want to go and if i need to process something then i process it or if just some random stuff just happens in my brain then sure but like i i definitely think i took really to heart uh what she said in her video about how she has like 15 hours per week of just uh like walking and and like just just time to think and it's like that's a lot of time that's like over two hours every day i'm like shit but that it's a good point to have because like do you ever really give your do does do people normally give themselves like that even remotely that much time to just let their thoughts like be and and let them happen and and formulate you know like on their own and and with no distractions kind of thing and i feel like most people don't and i think nope. the meditative practice of just doing that daily like i do it in the morning i also do it like before the sun goes down like i go on walks and then i sit outside on my like just outside my balcony there's like this bench that's kind of like in this nice uh area with the trees and like a little playground next to it and it's just it's really peaceful i just like sit out there for however long i feel like pretty much and and then do that so like i'm spending like a less time being on the computer and, and being on like other social like media and, and stuff like that. And I think that like definitely has been helping me just in general because it get like I said, it gives my t mind time to breathe and think about things. So if I need to process something heavy that I might have just recently dealt with, then it, hey, there's that time. And I think that helps a lot. Um, and it, it's 
like it's not just helped with melee it's helped with other parts but definitely with melee in particular because like i wrote you this whole essay worth of why <laughs> these parts of the game are not enjoyable right now and it's like now that i look at it again it's like huh you know uh unranked's not that bad ranked is fine like i just needed to be kinder to myself about the whole thing mm. At the same time, I think that it's good to have those thoughts down because if you ever need to refer back to them later, um, because you you know start to question your relationship with the game, that's okay too. Like it's good to like have that as a marker so you can understand your process and your progress and where you started and where you're going. This is a yeah. da this is a valuable data point. I mean, one of the things that really stood out to me was when you kind of mentioned that. Um, you know, tournaments, maybe maybe there was a bit of a hyperbole here, but I think that the idea that you enjoy tournaments that have a good spectator experience more high, significantly more highly, like you value those way more, I don't think that's like invalid in any way at all. I think that's actually very astute. Like I kind of value the same tournaments because I have like a husband and stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. If I want to bring him to a tournament, I kind of value ones that have like a better social experience or um, things for a spectator to do. So yeah, absolutely. Cause that's just part of how I go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's nothing wrong I with that. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad like that's the, the thing that I felt even with me being not a great headspace on <laughs> Sunday, that was the thing I was at least like confident that I came to the right conclusion for because like I, I mean it would explain like why like i said before um sometimes weeklies don't work i mean I, and it's weird too or it's like well etsukon was a weekend tournament and you were kind of meh on that but then like uh the picante that i did well at was a weekly but like i did well at that one and i enjoyed that one and it's like well i think it's more so the um it's when it's a weekly, like during the week, the the worst that can like like the lows are really really low compared to like a low at a weekend tournament where it's like worst case scenario, I get upset by someone, but I still have all these other things. Whereas if I enter a weekly or a or God forbid a net play tournament, it's like yeah, you get upset by someone. That's kind of it. Like you just kind of have to sit with that. And it's like that's not great. So. Yeah, I'm still pretty confident in that idea of just, like, I just want to enter stuff that's on the weekend, unless, of course, it's, like, a bigger tournament that's, like, three days and starts on Friday or whatever. Sure, semantics at that point. But yeah, I just think that's better for me. Like, I know people are, like, you know, go out and support your locals and stuff like that. But it's, like, I need to do this for myself. I need to, I need to make good mental health decisions for me and if i think it's best for me to not attend the weekly because i don't think it fits with what i want out of the game then i think that's valid like you said so yeah yeah absolutely so i think so let's so just to kind of regroup to our session i guess my question mm -hmm. would be is you've done a lot of self-reflection reflection recently um it sounds like you have a better understanding of what you want from the game and like how what makes for a good for a uh, formula, not just in the game, but like for you as a person. So how, mm -hmm. why don't I pass it to you? What do you want to do today? Well, well, what are your thoughts today? I was thinking, I don't know. I, um, I've just been mostly like, I haven't even really had much time. I want, I wanted to play ranked yesterday. Um, but I just got caught up with, I played a lot of final fantasy four and I played a good bit of 14 and uh i just was listening to a lot of music basically like if i don't get around to playing melee that day it's like it's fine it's whatever but then earlier today um like 30 minutes before i had a meeting at one i was like you know maybe i should record some more of abe's sets because i've been recording sets for abe uh so he can upload it to his youtube and when i after like while i was watching the first one i just like like it clicked in my brain i'm like huh you know this makes you want to play so after I was done recording that set, I just like hopped on unranked, ran into some Marth, and I just played them and just, I don't know, like I played well yet again. And I, but I wasn't like getting absorbed in the fact that like, oh, I'm playing really well right now. It's just like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just doing the situations. We're playing the RPS, and I'm not even caring that like I'm winning every game. Like that was another thing that would happen in unranked is like, 
ooh, if I won three games in a row, then, like, I should leave and I should go to someone that's better. It's like, no, I, don't, I just don't care about that. I, like, I feel like it's a pure sense of I just want to play the game. And I think that's, like, the healthiest approach. I agree. I was yeah. playing I was playing ranked earlier, and um, I, what I got would happen, like, I play. I think I went four and two today, but I barely even noticed it, really, because mm. it was just, like... Like, I had just finished playing against a Sheik player in friendlies, and they were not very fun to fight. We'll say, put it that way. Like, I won, every, I won like, three th three to the four games, but they were just, like, extremely not fun. So I was going to, like, right. not play, but then I was like, you know what? I want to play. So then I bumped into a Falco. The Falco, I think, 2 owed me. Then I lost my next set to a Falcon, and I was like, dang, like, we're off to a bad start. And then I just paused, and I was like, yeah, but I still feel like playing. So then I, mm -hmm. I fought another Sheik, won that, beat a Donkey Kong, beat a Falcon, beat another Falcon, and then I was like, oh, shit, like, it's almost time for our session, so I better right. stop, I better stop. Um, right, yeah. But I was like, I'm having fun, like, this is awesome, like, I love what's going on here. So, no, I totally get that. How would, are you, like, what's the vibe right now? Do you think you'd be up for playing, or do you think you're not up for playing? Because um, we I can mean, fill we can fill the time with other things if you're not like you said you're uploading sets for Abe Gannon we could definitely look at him and see what we can pick out of him but if you're up for playing we could do that too what do you want to do? I was thinking like don't get me wrong I was thinking about like well what do I want to because like I do have a lesson t today and I'm like hmm what should I do and I was thinking I'm I'm honestly just fine just talking about mental stuff the whole time I don't. That's fine. Have to play like like at least I will. I wasn't like planning on like I definitely should play this session or anything like that. If you want to have me play or like ranked or unranked, like I'm fine with that. I'm just kind of I don't know. I feel like just going with the flow, not going, not like having like worries about anything. I think is nice. But yeah, like my my idea was just I'm fine with just talking about mental stuff or even maybe non melee stuff too. Because sure. like yeah, a bit a little bit more carefree than usual. I'm totally fine with that. If you want to just see where the where the conversation takes us, a okay with me. Mhm. Mm yeah. So let me think here. So what is the so you mentioned that you watched the Heidi video on like how being hard on ourselves sabotages long term discipline. You know, this yes. is one that I actually watched with my husband, and we found like he found that this was him to a T. Um, mm -hmm. So my question here would be. Is there a part of that video that you found that like really like which quad so i know that she deals with like the quadrants like mm -hmm. you've got like the low discipline low empathy and attunement um we re and then you've got low discipline high empathy high attunement so are you saying that you started in kind of like the low empathy low discipline one and you're kind of like moving into the low discipline high empathy or um like what's your journey i guess i'm I just i'm guessing i'm curious about what your journey is so far and how you're fi and where you're going how you're finding it really yeah so when i was watching like the way that i was feeling on sunday and and like when i was watching the video i was like yeah everything that she's describing about um the low empathy low discipline and the uh low empathy high discipline quadrant and like their effects especially when like she said burnout it's like oh yeah yeah i feel that yeah like because it's like i think i'm in the burnout one because i keep trying to like make myself disciplined in this thing and and then also the whole thing about like you wanting to want something versus what you genuinely want and it's like okay now i really gotta think about what do i genuinely like want from this game and like it's just the really simple principle it's like i just want to play i i want to think about nothing else but playing the game i think that's the most baseline genuine want that i have all the other wants are just wants of wants that are kind of ego driven where it's like i'm caring about things that are not within the game so i was like watching through it and i'm like okay I definitely think I'm in this low empathy area and it's like, all right, well, she has me on board on like where she's like pinpointed exactly where I am mentally. And then she's like, I'm going to help you get to the other side where it's the high empathy stuff. And it's like, all right, I'm listening. I'm, I'm like really wanted to pay attention to it. And, and I think I definitely feel like that's where it resonates. So like 
as a, as I went through the day on Monday, I like kept trying to practice the higher empathy stuff, and then like, you know, when I got the idea for myself, thinking maybe I should, it's like, hmm, I kind of want to try to play melee, but I also told it was like, oh, I also told myself I wanted to take a break, but it's like, no, no, I'm again, I'm not trying to like force myself to not do something or or do something like I'm not trying to force this discipline just if it's a want if it's a genuine want like think about it like is it a genuine want and it's like I thought about it for like a good bit and I'm like I think it is a genuine want I do genuinely want to try this and so then when I did it bam I think um again I think it was in the the third quadrant where it's the high empathy low discipline because it's like I didn't feel like I was disciplining myself to go further it was just kind of like let's just experiment with this let's just see how it feels so definitely that quadrant um on monday and i don't know when it'll go into the discipline one because she she did mention that it um kind of just happens naturally um as you keep trying to express your true self and and what you really want and it's like i i guess just with time the discipline part will come up it's just based on my wants like if i get if my wants are satisfied purely just by playing the game even if it's just for 30 minutes and like that's it for the day then that's probably all i need in that regard but i'm sure with other parts it'll probably the discipline side might come out more so it just depends on like hmm. how much more i want to do with the game i i guess i can actually help with that one so for me so um I don't know if I've told you this before. Maybe it's come up. My background actually is psychology. So um, these concepts and stuff are actually like pretty familiar to me. Um, mm -hmm. So one, the one thing I would say is um, when it comes to behavioral psychology, which is what I did, generally what we, we, we don't always agree on everything with the other branches, but what we generally do agree on is that reinforcement is like super, super, super big. The brain loves reinforcement. So mm -hmm. what happens with the low discipline, high empathy and attunement is think of it like a filter, right? So you have yourself doing branching out and doing all these things. And because you're being more aware of yourself, you're, you're kind of like filtering out the things that you don't want to do. So mm -hmm. you're only like leaving yourselves with the, yourself with the things that you do want to do, right? So yep. because of that, you're reinforce you're naturally creating discipline out of doing those things because you are motivated to do those things. Like motivation right. is kind of nonsense, but like you no know, motivation like when we think about as it as a willpower standpoint is kind of nonsense, but if we think about motivation as really just like our willingness to like engage in like our willingness to build a habit, we are doing that in re and we are doing that reinforcing that and cultivating that by this process. So we're just like right. training ourselves to do exactly the things we want to do. So that is how the discipline forms. <clears throat> hmm. So it's a good point because uh, it feels like I've already just done like the habit of just you know giving myself time to just think like the meditative practices that I mentioned. Like I've already been doing them and I'm gonna keep doing them because you know. That it feels natural to me. So yeah, you're pretty much right there. For me, it's walking. I noticed mm. that I need to go on walks because they are what help me clear my head. They're something that like my, without getting into it, my childhood was very chaos. Um, mm. So the walking, like taking my brothers or the dog, like and getting us out of the house so that we could just be away from like the chaos at home was one of our coping mechanisms. And it's something that like, it's one of something I associate with peace because of it, right? right. So it's one of the times I feel safest um, when I'm just walking down the nature trails near my place. It's one of the times I feel most at ease because it's just been created through reinforcement. And then it makes me want to do it because it's just, I feel, I feel calm, I feel collected, I feel my best self. Um, and then, yeah, then I can think. I can think, I yeah. can in my head, I can reset. Peace is definitely like the word that I felt on Monday and kind of it's just kind of reverberated like throughout since then. Just this feeling of like, not even like, cause content, contentness is like, you're like settling for something even if you might not necessarily want to. Peace is like, this is what I want and it's just, it's calming. Like there's, there's, I don't know. It's like Zen in a way. And it's like, 
Uh, mm. Yeah, like like it's Zen, and I'm not letting it get to my ego. You I think know? I, I think I see the distinction. It's like correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like satisfaction versus fulfillment. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about then. Yeah, because that's like that's also like I did not know that I would go into like coaching is my nine to five now. Like it is my full time mm-hmm. job, and I had no idea when I was giving up my cushy Amex job that this was going to work out. Like I had absolutely zero clue, but I had a lot of discipline and a lot and a very little empathy for myself, and I hated my job. Like mm-hmm. I could not stand to get up in the morning. Um, like like addiction problems from a long time ago were starting to rear their head again like it was mm-hmm. just was not a good look because i just couldn't muster the willpower to just get into that you know, to just open that laptop and like deal with another like escalation from some you know from some client or whatever i right. just didn't care and i realized that it's just whenever when it's always about the bottom line when it's all when the end goal is always about like money 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 i just don't have any investment in that um, right. and I don't know how to, um, so it's, I needed to like, and I told Rick and I, I when I told him I was in a bit of a fritz cause I was just went, Oh my God, like, what do I do? And like, I've, I've worked my, like, I've worked really hard. I've gotten in front of the right people. I've gotten this job. It pays well, like it pays pretty well for this kind of role and it's at a good company. Like there's lots of upwards mobility and I hate it. Mm-hmm. Like what am I supposed to do? <laughs> right, yeah. And and then he was just like, "Well, I just got my promotion. I love what I do. I want that for you." And I just went, "Okay, but that doesn't help me." <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not an answer, Rick. <laughs> right. Um. So I had to, I had a bit of a meltdown. Uh, capital mm-hmm. M, <laughs> capital D for that matter. <laughs> right. And um. Yeah, but now I'm here. And I, I'm i not saying that I don't know what you do. I don't know what your situation is. But certainly on the melee front, it sounds like you're way happier. And I love that for you. <laughs> like, I'm so happy yeah. to hear that. Yeah, it's like... Because, like, the lesson that we had uh, two weeks ago where you said I played, like, the best that I've ever... Or you best you've ever seen me play. Like, I don't know. That wasn't enlightenment or fulfillment. I think it was kind of, like satisfaction is not really the word either. I I feel like I'd have to go back and rewatch it to kind of pinpoint it, but it's like a different positive feeling, but there's still that like, Hey, I got to satisfy my ego thing instead of it just being like, this is Zen kind of like, I'm just experiencing things for the way they are. Like, like there's a fundamental mental difference between where I'm at now versus where it was two weeks ago. And I think that's, kind of noteworthy in a way like i'm still so like i when i when i said i wanted to take a break from the game it's like again that was because i was not in a great mental hud space and it's like oh well now i'm feeling like the genuine wants of hey if i want to play melee this particular point in time i can do that sure and i have a much better time recognizing like okay do I want to keep going because I want to just keep playing the game more and it's really fun right now? Or do I want to keep going because I'm kind of salty that I lost that last game or that I messed something up or whatever? Like, I'm much more willing to just stop and just, like, listen. Like, okay, what is my ego telling me? And, like, if it's if it's a very unproductive kind of thought, then it's like, well, let's sit on it for a little bit. Let's we're we're not gonna immediately like stop, but we're also not gonna immediately like go. We're just gonna like pause and evaluate and just try to like listen to ourselves and then okay. Then we come up with like a plan after that. Cause it's like I'm again I'm trying to like I'm trying to treat like the ego like it's an inner child. Like it's literally like my son or something. And it's like, hey, I just need to sit down with this misbehaving kid and i need to like understand like his perspective where he's coming from because like that's what good parenting is right like you're trying to understand why they're having this temper tantrum why it's making me angry and it's like when you come from a place of understanding like that and it's more pure and enlightened i think that's just like i said it affects pretty much every aspect of your life not just melee like even with like you mentioned your job like my job is like I mean, I do QA stuff. I do some coding. Haven't been doing much of it lately, but I've, I don't know. It's like, 
I work from home. I, I pretty much have everything I could want as far as a job. I don't hate it. I will I will tell you that. Like, I definitely don't hate it. It has its ups. It has its downs. Sure. It's, it's a job, and it, you know, it helps me stay where I'm at right now, and, you know, that's all I can really ask for. Um, would I say I'm, like, getting fulfilled or challenged by it? Like, not necessarily, but I don't also really have a problem with just kind of letting things be and just seeing kind of where time takes me because like i don't know maybe later down the line i'm gonna feel like what i genuinely want to do with my job is something higher up or more technically demanding or or like actually challenging and maybe i need to like take on another responsibility or something it just hasn't quite gotten to that point yet and i've just been pretty fine with where i'm at because most of the other genuine wants are just around video games typically or social interaction like i don't really feel like i need a whole lot with with a job but it still felt even with that being said even like with all the the ego practicing stuff that i've been doing like it's felt just a little better like it's felt a little bit more kind of peaceful in a way and i haven't like because there, there were some things at work that were annoying me you know but like now they're not really doing that they're they're just kind of like oh you know this is just a thing that's you know just I, i'm just kind of ex more accepting of it and yeah honestly i think i love that because you're right like i find that so i guess one thing i want to clarify is that my job was getting rid of hybrid so, so that was also definitely a factor. Like I did. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like for me, it was like the insulation of like being able to work from home and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Like that was dis. Like that was rapid. Like we were always hybrid, but like they were kind of lax on it. And then they were like mm -hmm. basically like hampering down. They were reducing the number of days from working from home. Um, so it was just the the structure was changing. I'd asked for accommodation. They said no. And, well, actually, oh. tactic, technically, they said nothing, but <laughs> that's oh, <okay. laughs> basically no. Um, and then that's when I kind of, like, collapsed. That's kind of when I had my breakdown. I kind of collapsed. I went, oh, dear. Like, what do I do with yeah. this? Um, so it is what it is. Again, I think that it is an okay place to work for, for, like, if it's what you're in for, if it's what you're into. It just wasn't what I was into. Um, right. And I think yeah. and I think it's good of you to recognize that maybe all my fulfillment doesn't have like maybe fulfillment doesn't necessarily can to come from my job. Um, right. Maybe I have maybe what I'm doing works for me insofar that it helps me support the lifestyle I want by giving me the resources I need to support that lifestyle when I'm off the clock. And if you right. it if it does that for you, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. For me, it was not doing that for me. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, that it makes sense. Then you, I mean, hey, you you listen to what you genuinely want and look at where you are now. I think I would imagine you're in a happier spot than I'm, you were. Back I'm then. Over, I am so overjoyed all the time. It's actually kind of annoying for it's annoying for a lot <laughs> of my friends because like they're just they're just like God, you're just who what? who finds someone being genuinely happy annoying? Like that's an honest question. It's not really annoyed. It's more like they just I've given my at least two of my friends like existential crises because they're they're because oh. they're, they're like what am I doing with my life? Uh. <laughs> like, Oh, no. Well, I mean, I don't know. Like, if if sometimes it what it takes to get you on like a better path of fulfillment for yourself is like an existential crisis for a day or so, then like that, like it's better to it's better to have that. Like, like sure, having an existential crisis sucks. It like you're depressed for like days, sometimes longer, and it's a miserable experience. But like, if you come out of it with like new knowledge and new understanding and like whoa the world looks totally different now like i'd prefer that over monotony day after day after day and just feeling empty and and, and not doing anything about it like you know like if, if a conversation is enough to get someone to like really think about what they want to do in life then hell yeah power to them you know it's it's almost like i'm doing you a favor like i don't sure i don't want you to be depressed but like if this is the necessary thing that needs to happen for you to get stuff kicked into gear then by all means do it 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, it's funny because I feel like if we change the subject there to from existential crisis to bad loss in the, in the melee, mm-hmm. like we can kind of like apply a similar framework, can't we? Right? Like there's similar takeaways. Yep. Like as long as we learn something, as long as we walk away with something that helps us like grow and gets us to that, you no, know, gets us where we to where we want to be. Whether that's even just our next set, whether that's even just accepting. Yeah, I really don't like this like play style. I don't like fighting this. Like, let's not do this again. Right. Um, like, yeah. hmm. I don't even think, like, like the, the term even bad loss is, like, it's implying that, like, it, it's basically it's indirectly talking about something that's outside of the game. Because, like, hmm. in the context of the game, like, if the person's doing a strategy that's just barely beating yours and, like, you're having a level head about it and then you're literally just, like, yeah, every time I try to like hit them in this spot, I'm just like not getting the hit or like they're doing they're just doing something better. And it's like the only time like like it, it goes from, huh, they're outplaying me to, oh, this is a bad loss because <laughs> you're the person outside of the context of the game is like accepted widely as bad player or worse than you in a way. And it's just like, I don't know, like it's a very diverse and dynamically interactive game. Like, it sure, you know, as far as, like, if you're, like, a top player, you're not really going to lose to that many people. But, like, when you're up and coming, you could... Like, there's certain play styles, like, that will beat me specifically because it's, like, a almost a direct counter to the way that I think about the game. And, yes, they're very annoying to play against, but it's, like, when I run into it, it's, like, hmm, what do I need to change? What... Like it's a puzzle. It's it's a challenge in a different kind of way, and I just need to think about it differently. That, that's why when people try to camp me, I don't get annoyed by it. I don't get bothered by it. People try to like really slow down the pace of the game. Um, also, what I used to do is when someone would like slow down the pace of the game or like camp or whatever, I'd I'd try to be like vindictive or like you know oh you're gonna be a dick to me. I'm gonna be a dick right back and like camp them back and then taunt them or teabag or whatever and like you know like, oh that feels good because it's like you're satisfying your ego but ultimately that's doing you no good at all um and what's better when that happens is like if you're in the mindset of okay they're presenting me with a new problem i'm unfamiliar with this i need to poke at it a little bit to like try things out see what works what maybe doesn't and go from there and i think that's like important and, and sometimes a player that is seated below you just has that strategy and sometimes a best of three is not long enough for you to figure it out and you just have to accept that honestly i needed to i should have talked to you before fighting that cheek player <laughs> <laughs> i definitely taught i definitely taunted um uh, because i was not mm -hmm. ha i was not having a good i was not having a good time but i can see where i definitely let my own ego like run away a little bit yeah, I, I, I definitely think it's the recognizing and the awareness of, like, where your thoughts are taking you and, and, like, while you're playing, like, just the general kind of emotion and feeling and, and understanding, like, okay, is this coming from an egotistical thought or is this, like, I'm tired or, or like, some other thing maybe might be causing the frustration? It might not be ego. It's not always ego, but it's important to have that pause you know sometimes on the angel platform to have that like all right i need to, I need to mentally check in How am I doing? <laughs> oh you've, you're you're excited to use that one on me weren't you <laughs> well, I, <laughs> i'm teasing look i'm, I'm just teasing. i'm just taking what i learned previously and just applying it in new creative ways no worries no i i deserve that i should have like i should have taken my own advice absolutely at the same time i kind of think that like I don't know. I find that people get mad at me for taunting, so then I think that, like, it kind of spirals, but I think that's just a matter of, like, he's, like, um, pointing fingers. So I think I need to be aware of that. Like, just because I do it, and then, then I get a rise out of them, I can't really be mad at them for, like, them rising, you know? Yeah, taunting... Taunting is Taunting's like, weird. I don't understand why people get so like annoyed with it, though. Like, I... It's, it's an ego... It's little... Okay, so you know how, like, um, Peach, like, like a scrub check is like Peach being like float cancel down smash on shield and stuff like that. 
I mean, kind of. Like, it can be, but it's also a good play. But yeah, yeah, go on. But So, like, the mental scrub check is seeing if taunting does anything. <laughs> if taunting does nothing, then they are, they don't, their ego doesn't care. But if taunting is, like, changing their playstyle or, or, like, you know it, like, gets under their skin, then, like, sure. I don't know. Like, I, I think from my perspective, if I'm in, like, my, like, kind of zen idea and it's like well i know this person really doesn't like it when they get taunted on and it's like yeah but like i don't know i i there's something that feels like sure you get a competitive advantage by upsetting your opponent like that and taking advantage of that part but at the same time it's like do i want to do that do i get enjoyment out of doing that and it's like not like like it is it does it satisfy my ego yes does it is it actually a fulfilling thing to do no so i kind of opt to not do it unless like i do some sick as fuck combo and i like kill off the top with like up smash or something or i do some like super hard read with like f smash and i'm just like okay i'm gonna taunt for that like come on <laughs> like i kind of earned that one but but yeah like i think taunting is like the mental scrub check for most people and i think that's why aklo did it so much too because he just like he's he's he does get enjoyment out of testing that with other people and, and he just does it all the time so like when he knows that like it won't work on you he probably just doesn't do it anymore or maybe he does keep doing it and and then you're just like oh you're taunting like okay you're wasting frames i'm gonna hit you for it or something you know yeah you're like not prepping your next thing yeah it's like i like i don't i don't care like uh, like it used to bother me like like i I think the last ranked set i played against um i actually played against this puff and it went to game three like last hit they actually got a two stock comeback and in their like last hit which i think on me which was like an f smash and it killed off the top they like taunted and it's like at the time i was kind of not happy about it you know because i hadn't practiced the whole like non-ego thing but uh, but also it's like I can't fault them. They they made a comeback, and and they were like celebrating about it. You know, like not all taunts are. It's like also another thing is not all taunts are meant to be malicious. Sometimes they're just like pumping themselves up. They're not like trying to make you ma mad. And people make that assumption all the time that it's you know otherwise. I definitely taunted four times against a she against a falcon player, but that one I do, and that one I was trying to make them feel bad. But the reason I had a very specific reason, they had counter mm -hmm. they had switched to Sheik, and their Sheik was not very good, and it was a ranked mm -hmm. set. So I was like, dude, we could have had like a fun set, and here you are going your like Sheik that you don't play. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I I just I like just I think I just care so little about that part because like again that's a macro game thing. That's something outside of the context of what's happening actually True. inside the game and it's just like i think it's just a, ultimately a distraction it's like okay cool i mean like you main falcon but you decided to switch to chic because i'm playing ness or whatever it's like all right final player chic that's fine whatever you know yeah like, just beat it move on yeah pretty much like n like not even like a apprehensive like uh like this is kind of wasting my time kind of thing that's another wasting wasting your time yeah wait you that's hmm. feeling like your time's being wasted is definitely another ego thing that I've been a lot more careful on how I describe things. Cause whenever I have told myself, Oh, I don't like it when I'm, my time is wasted in this aspect. It's like, where is that coming from? And it's like, Oh, you know what? That's actually ego. Cause, cause my ego hates it when it feels like time's being wasted. And it's like, but like, is it really bad? And like, and now my habit every day is to spend however many minutes or even hours just sitting around doing fucking nothing wouldn't that be a waste of time doesn't that piss my ego off and it's like no because i'm doing the right like thought patterns and and meditating on it like it's not a waste of time that time doing nothing is ironically enough not a waste of time so you have to like that's like another thing to like consider when someone picks a character that's not their main are they actually wasting your time? Do they just want to try something? Like you're, you have to make a lot of assumptions, yeah. or just one general sweeping assumption to think, oh, I don't like this because I think they're wasting my time. And it's just like, it it it's simplified 
by just con taking it in the context of within the game. But it also just helps to just be like, it's whatever, like, like my time is different from their time. Like they can do whatever they want to do. I'm just here until the set's over and then I can choose to keep playing ranked or not if I want, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> no, that's good. These are good points. Like, huh, you're kind of coaching the coach today. But it's good. No, no, it's good. It. No, it's good. Because, like, I feel like I didn't do well at Gobble, but, like, I did okay. I think I did about as well as, like, I could have expected. Like, I lost to Quang, mm -hmm. the, the Donkey Kong, and then right. I almost made it into top 128, but I missed it because I lost to a formerly PR Marth in our region. Mm. So gotcha. somebody, who, somebody who's beaten Joey, somebody who knows the matchup, and it was game five, last stock, last hit, and game four, last stock, last hit. If I had gotten, right. if I had gotten either of those, I win the set and I advance because I was two one as of game three. Right. Um, so I actually, I actually messed him up on FD. Like <laughs> mm, <laughs> his, he nice. counter, he counterpicked game FD game three, and I had a moment where I was like. Oh my god, did I go chic? Like Chris is so good. And then I <laughs> and I was like, you know what? No, like I came here to play Ness. I'm gonna play Ness. Right. And I want that's who I wanna do. And then I like I I fucked him up. And it was yeah. it felt good. But then and then ever since then I feel like I've just been a little too self absorbed, I think, and a little too egocentric. And I, I think that's it's really just like I did better than I expected. I beat our like vying for pr luigi player like trevor mm. like we have two of them we have amp and trevor and then mm. murphy prime's like pretty good but yeah like i beat trevor like i 3 would him i made a 4-2 comeback on him as well on his counter pick um, right which felt amazing and i just yeah i need to uh and then there's like other frustrations within the community but those are like a little more serious don't want to get into those but it's just yeah it's a combination of like everything i think i'm just been like on a bit of a short fuse and i need to just kind of like i think i need to decompress i need to just allow myself to breathe more maybe mm -hmm. i need a second yeah. walk i don't know but like... maybe i mean i it's it's definitely helps to have like a habit of giving yourself time to think per day because i think that should be like a daily habit um but I wanted to share that, like, I think a good litmus test for knowing if, like, you're in the right mental spot to, like, maybe not necessarily compete, but just, like, play the game in general. So, you know, I because you mentioned that you remembered you had a four, four to two stock comeback. Mm -hmm. I think a great litmus test is actually not remembering you made a comeback at all. Like, you're so, like flow state zeroed into the game like zen like like you are so flow state you don't even rem you you're not even aware of the fact that you made a comeback you just you take each stock individually as a thing that's happening you're not even caring about the whole game state you're just you're playing the situations out and you're so focused on just that stuff that like next thing you know you won and you're like huh that was interesting and then like Sometimes you don't even like, and then like you have to remember. Wait a minute, was that a three stock comeback? Was that an X comeback? Like, there's like I, even in some of the unranked games I played like yesterday and and Monday, like I thought my opponent had an extra stock still, but then I'm like, wait, I just two stock this dude. Like, huh? Like that was kind of wild. And it just it just that like that kind of happens. So if you find yourself like not really paying like hard attention to like stock counts and stuff like that, I think that's a good way to tell that like you're probably thinking about the right things hmm i think that's going to be very difficult for me because i have a very good memory for those things <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah yeah because your ego really wants to like keep track of the game state because then once you get down to your last stock you're like oh crap i'm really hmm. like i only have one left i i could lose here if like i don't play things right when you could just think it's just like i don't know like it's just it's another stock in the game like the, the, each game is just you have four stocks like w w it'd be the same thing whether you had three or five it doesn't it's like just the, because you have four and you're down to your last one is like i don't know i i think people do still get too hung up on like whether they're gonna win that game or not i think it's more like just play each stock as it's like separate thing oh no i, agree I think with that's you. the more important thing Oh, no, no, I agree with you. I think that for me, I definitely noticed that my play got more conservative when I realized I was down so much. Mm -hmm. 
I think it was more that I had an observation. Like right. it's not it's not so much that I got hung up thinking about it. Like I was happy that I won and I like definitely like had a had a mini pop off. Like I think mm-hmm. it just like fist bumped or something. Yeah. Like or like punched the air or something. But like it was how do I put this? When I got hit by the misfire and died, I it kind of like it kind of like clued me in that the game was not going in my favor and I needed to mm-hmm. do something about it. It's not right. that I hadn't been fighting like my best up to that point or like the best that I could up to that point. It's just I think he made some adjustments and I was still like trying to figure out what like what to do about them. Mm-hmm. Um cuz he like started like nor- we started on battlefield and like Battlefield went really well. Like Battlefield, everything went according to plan. Then game two, like he started playing, keeping more distance and like really picking his spots more carefully. And I hadn't really figured out the pattern of it. Mm-hmm. So I think at four two, that's when I started to like really put things together because I think there was something about how he recovered that like, in, in addition to the misfire killing me, the way he kept space from to like avoid my back air during the recovery also kind of clued me in as to what was going on. So then. Right. So then once I had that, I just knew that I couldn't play to back air as much. So I started looking for other openings. And I think that you sometimes need, like, something like that to help us, like, clue in. Because I didn't really... Yeah. Like, I think I don't think I wasn't locked in just because I remembered it was a comeback. I just remember being happy after the fact because I was like, oh, yeah, that was, okay. like, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely good. Yeah, like, it was still a close game. He fought really well. I was just happy that I managed to clutch it. Yeah, that's definitely a a pretty good feeling. Yeah, but mm. I see I see your point about like getting fixated on it because it's like it's easy to get so wor- so like f- tunnel visioned on like the outcome and mm. like the end result that we yeah and I think that's really I think the real thing is is are you taking like how I'd expand on your litmus test is are we taking that to other sets? Hmm. Yeah. And not just one particular one. <laughs> like, is this just an overall feeling? And, um, and I think I definitely did that. <laughs> yeah. I think another thing that, for me personally, what makes the game really, like, fun um, is not... So I, there's a difference between a Hail Mary and throwing someone for a loop. Um, what I like to do is I like to try to throw people for a loop where I try to I, I like make it look like i'm gonna go for the usual like i don't know back air or something that i'm like trying to do but then i like do something wacky like i'll empty land f smash and it works because they're so t- in tune into thinking that like i'm gonna do this particular thing like this bad move that sucks that has so much ending lag hits people do you know like <laughs> do you know how many F smashes I have been landing on people because I do it when they least expect it? Like, it's almost, it's like funny in, in like a genuinely like, not like, oh, haha, I think this person's stupid for running into this. I'm just like, wow, this is such a left field thing that they don't expect it. And it, and it like, I just, I either get a kill or I get a, like a meaty hit for it. And it's like, I can only imagine what's going in their head but it's fun for me to just throw these wrenches just in the game plan kind of out of nowhere and and just like like i I wouldn't call them like they're not scrub tests obviously because like those are a little different like this is just like you don't expect this you you know you never expect this specific like thing to happen and like i think that's fun i that's part of what makes the game like super fun for me and you know, sometimes it's fun to do that to clutch out a game. Sometimes it's fun to do that just, like, even if you're, like, losing. Like, even even if it's like, oh, I, I lost the game two socks of one, but fuck, I got that one cool, like, F-Smash read thing. And, like, sometimes that's, that's all it, it needs to happen for me to feel like it was worth it. This moment here versus just, um, this was at Fire, this was in Fire Sheep's low tier turn, like, low and mid tier tournament. Um, mm-hmm. I think in our mat in our like game one or I think this is game one or three. I forget which one it was. I know two was on FD, but so like knowing that he was gonna forward smash because he'd like done it before. So mm-hmm. then I just decided to forward smash back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? I I feel like I should have. Uh, I maybe should have. Now, now I'm, of course I'm thinking about this now. I I have. 
I think a couple clips. I, I maybe I can find this on. Yeah, you know what? I can find this really quickly. This uh, this Peach player. I want to show this one game because I want to show kind of what I'm, I'm talking about with like the. Yo, do it. The F smashing or or, or whatever. Uh, let me share the screen. It sounds like a plan. Perfect. I think I'm gonna turn the audio down just a hair. Sounds so good. Sounds so good. I can hear my own thoughts, but like, actually, I'll even just zoom. Why don't we just watch forward. the mat? Why don't we just mad to watch the match? Okay, sure. I mean, like, it's at the well, end anyway. Yeah, so we'll just ah. see what's going on here. We'll see how you like mess up this peach player. So they're like starting out strong using their things. Oh, okay. There's that dash attack, yo. That move's so sick. I'm so glad yeah. we looked into that. I'm so glad I looked like, that up. Like this dare, for example. I like looking back at it. I'm like, how did I land this? <laughs> like, it's wild to think about. Okay, so he jumps back. Oh, I, then... I can I can tell you how that worked. How? So she thought, so the Peach, she thought that you were going to come forward with Fair, so she did a fast move, her down air, probably meant to be mm -hmm. an air, to try to protect herself. So then you went around that with your double jump and punished her. Yeah, okay. Like, it's it's funny how, like, I'll look back and I'm like, man, I will, I will have something if I don't even remember, like, how I got this hit, but I got it. <laughs> it, no, feels it, was a, it was a really great. good idea. It was a really good idea. Like, this is the thing. Like, are, are we go too fast. Oh, my God, you tried to overshoot Wizard Foot. That's sick. Like, good yep. stuff. <laughs> But yeah, no, like it's our subcon. The game is too fast for us to be able to play it consciously from start to finish. It's just the like, way it is. Like, what is the like? What am I doing here? Like, why would I ever <laughs> think to dare? Like, he did. He like double jumped and floated and then tried to bear. And it's like, oh, I'm in the perfect position to down air this. Like, but, all right. But you know what? Sometimes you're just sick with it. <laughs> but that's like. That's what's fun about the game. When I do stuff like that, your spacing is under. I, I take it back. This is the best I've ever seen you play. <laughs> like, this is this is ridiculous. Like, how are you doing this? It's so cool. I don't know. I channeled my inner nun. I guess that that's kind of also part of it. I yeah. This is. I'll tell you one thing. This is not like. This is not Kage. <laughs> nope. Fair grab? Let's yep. go. Like, I don't, I don't normally do fair grab, but I'm just like, okay, well, I did fair jab earlier, and, like, I think he's kind of, he's going to hold shield again. Like, it was kind of a, it was basically a mix-up. And I'm like, it oh, is well, a mix -up. I have it some. Is... Yeah. yeah. No, it is absolutely a mix-up, because, like, normally they're holding block for jab so they can punish after, yep. and then you're just like, okay, come here. Down B into like the middle of the stage. I'm like, I just don't care. I'm playing with reckless abandon. But it's like, also, but you know what? The thing is, there's a kind of a method to the madness because like you're also by down being into the middle of the stage, you're landing on the stage. You're making sure that you have your double jump when you go off. Mm -hmm. You're going off from a more central location. You have the option to OMS attack, which she as a character is not good against. Right. Like this, you 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 say that like this is reckless abandon, but a lot of what you're doing makes a ton of sense. Yeah, like here's another example. I, I do an empty land right next to her shield, and I tried to side B. Now, uh, admittedly, this was the right read because she does roll away. I just, if I was closer, it would have worked. But it's like, oh, well. But you know that for next time. Because you're trying, do, yeah. because you're trying things, you now have a you have way more data points for like how you can improve your game. I think that this is really like the magic of like a bravery because it just like allows you to try things and get and understand yep. what you can do. Yep, I've been trying to up. I've been trying to up be a role like. <laughs> but then when you got one. when you got when you got um. Jab like see when you got I'm um, jab though you were still ASDI down so you were yep. able to like counter hit with the jab like that's yep. this is genuinely like incredible play like this is really really good play. I waited for the double jab for that. Yeah. You're moonwalking. <laughs> oh, like, I still got the grab. That's crazy. The mix-ups. Traded. This is like such yo you ha tell me you're gonna upload this game. <laughs> uh, well, it's a it's an unranked game, so I don't know. But it's sick. Have you considered that? Oh, like <laughs> what? Yeah. Got the roll. 
<laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> See, like, that was fun. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That looked devastating. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just like, I'm gonna F smash this guy, and then and then he rolled into it. I'm like, oh hell yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you uh, shared that with me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's been a couple other moments, but that was definitely, like, the one that stood out to me the most in the last few days. I'm going to have to make a combo video of y'all. <laughs> 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 Some of you guys, like, y'all do, like, the sickest, like, I, I mean that I, I mean it. Y'all do, like, really, really sick plays. I love it. I love seeing yeah. the progress. Like, yeah, so, like, when I want to, when I, because I still do want to, like, enter tournaments, but I think I'm just... I'm not caring as much about, like, just play the game, enjoy each stock for what it offers, and it's as simple as that. You don't have to care about those other things, because I think it just clouds your judgment and it distracts you from what's actually fun and what you actually genuinely want to do, or what I genuinely want to do. Some people find the whole competitive aspect and the I want to be PR thing a driving factor. Power to them. I'm not one of those people, unfortunately. But I think this is the way I need to, or I would like to keep playing melee. I love that, and I, you know what? It harkens back to some one of the first things you told me in one of our earlier sessions. Um, when I cut out that coaching, like that coaching snippet, because what you told me was you're you were happy with working with me because it didn't feel like I was trying to just turn you into the best player. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to, like, help you have the tools so that you were able to play more effectively in the way that you wanted to play. Yeah. And I think that we're, you know what, even with us, like, re redefining what that means, I think we're still kind of succeeding on that, which is... Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm through, this is amazing. Um, and those, for those of you watching the video, the channel is Heidi Preeb, which I will, should show in the video. She is lovely. She is extremely good at psychology. Everyone, like, remember to, no, everyone take a look. She's very good with self-esteem and other things like that. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave that up. But with that, I think we're at time. Is there anything you need from me before we go, or do you think we're in a good place for now? I, I'm in a I'm in a pretty good spot, honestly. If um if anything obstacle wise comes up that I want to talk about, I'll just DM you about it over the next yeah. two weeks. But I'd say right now I'm in a pretty comfortable spot. I'm playing at a pretty good pacing. I'm not trying to like like even when I played unranked on Monday, I was like I actually genuinely like wanted to play like a lot longer than I normally do because I was just genuinely wanting to play the game, and it's like cool. I just want to, I just want to keep playing. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So, we'll we'll see where we are in two weeks, I suppose. Absolutely, I'll let you go then. But this was lovely. Always a pleasure, mm -hmm. Red Man. And yeah, I'll see you around. In, I'll see you in two weeks, unless we talk sooner. Sounds good. See you then.